Coming up on this edition of Saints Now by Chat Sports, we're going to be breaking down the latest free agency move that the Saints made. They brought in a cornerback to add to their roster. And on top of that, we're going to dive into the ESPN mock draft that broke down the top 100 selections. Field Yates, Mel Kuyper, they went back and forth and they were making selections for uh, the first three rounds. And I'm going to break down who they had the Saints taken. But on top of that, I need your help. Don't let me down, Saints fans. Our most liked video in April this month has 197 likes. And I'm one of those guys who likes to one-up myself and compete with myself. So I want to try and break that record with today's video. So help me out. Drop a like on today's video. And let's impress my bosses together. Now, in terms of the roster moves for New Orleans, the Saints have signed Shamar John Charles, the cornerback, who last year was on the roster and spent some time with New Orleans, but in a very limited role. And on top of that, I don't think that this is a guy who's going to get a ton of run on the defense, but I think he will get some. Now, it is a one-year deal worth about $1.06 million. There's a $50,000 roster bonus for the first game, and it's a vet minimum deal, so it shakes out to be just over a million dollars. And like I said, there's familiarity there with New Orleans as he was signed to the practice squad last November after being waived by the 49ers. Now, this is a solid special teams piece, and he did contribute last year on the defense against Atlanta in Week 18, and this is how the updated depth chart still shakes out. So, Paul Sumidibo, Marshawn Lattimore, Alante Taylor, obviously those are going to be your starting three cornerbacks. I do expect them to bring in some more talent and some more players to compete in training camp, whether it's through the draft, whether it's through late free agency, or of course the UDFA route as well, which New Orleans has been extremely successful in. So now let's break down the ESPN mock draft with Mel Kuyper and Field Yates. I wanted to just go ahead and show you what the uh, top 10 selections, let's say top 11, because we all know Caleb Williams is going number one overall to the Bears. So I just went 2 through 11. Here's how those picks turned out to shake out. And I do think that the Falcons and Dallas Turner is getting a really good pick. I think that Joe Walt, it's pretty much a lock there to go number 7 to the Titans. J.J. McCarthy, Jane Daniels, Drake May. I think that we will see four quarterbacks taken within the top five picks. And maybe even uh, Arizona could look to trade back. But moving on, we go to Brock Bowers getting selected by the Denver Broncos and Sean Payton. Quinion Mitchell, in my opinion, the top cornerback in this draft class, heads over to the Sin City to help out the Raiders defense. And I'm going to tell you who the Saints have here in just one second. But I want to encourage you to subscribe because I don't want you missing out on any news or any updates around the black and gold. So if you haven't already, lock us in, hit that sub button, so that way you can know what's going around your favorite football team. Now here is what the ESPN mock draft results are for the New Orleans Saints. They select Olu Fashanu, the six foot six, three hundred and nineteen pound offensive tackle out of Penn State. Now this is a player who has really, really nice size, really nice athleticism, and he's really talented in pass protection. But where there's pros, there's cons and at the end of the day, he could be a little bit better at run blocking, and he's not a great finisher, and you want to see him be a little bit more aggressive. But for just 21 years old, he has really, really nice feel. He mirrors well, and he has a solid anchor when he's trying to block. And on top of that, another con for me, he did have his penalties jump this past year, and we saw him commit more of those fouls for the Nittany Lions and stuff. So that's something I want to see get coached out and shaken out because – in my opinion, I think the Saints offensive line had a lot of penalties last year, and that's just something that keeps continuing to shoot themselves in the foot. But let's see why Field Yates had the Saints selecting the offensive tackle. He said that New Orleans' offensive tackle situation is too murky to ignore. For the record, I totally agree with that. Fashanu would be an ideal combination of need and value. The Saints can slot him in on either the right or left side, depending on Ryan Ramchek's status and what they decide to do with Trevor Penning. Now, I want to just give some credit to Field Yates for acknowledging both sides of the bill because not just the left tackle side is struggling, but you also have the Ryan Ramchek injury on the right tackle side. And I do think that Fashanu was really, really effective last year. PFF does agree with me. And on top of that, you can see that he had five 
or he had zero uh, quarterback hits, zero hurries allowed, zero sacks allowed, and that's something that I really like. The run blocking grade, 70.5. I think he needs to get a little bit better. The zone grade, 69.3. I do expect the Saints to run a little bit more of a zone offense and ha utilize that play style under Clint Kubiak, but with the depth chart, I mean, Trevor Penning, I'm not giving up hope on him. He just hasn't shown me anything that makes me believe in the prospect yet. I do think that he should get this last season to try and compete and try and be the starter for the left tackle position. If he doesn't work out, you got to just make a you got to make something happen and bring in another left tackle. Now, Ryan Ranchek, like I mentioned, he has the injury issues, but you have Ole Udo who is a solid swing tackle that you brought in through free agency. You have Landon Young and Tommy Kramer to back up the right tackle position. I do think that Olu Fashanu is a great selection. He logged a lot of snaps at the left tackle position, and at the end of the day, that's something that the New Orleans Saints need. Now, if you ask me, I think that the offensive line is a 10 out of 10 need. So what do you think? Scale it for me one to 10. One, you don't think it's that important. 10, you have to draft an offensive line in the first round. I'm going with a 10, but I want to hear what you guys have to say. Now, coming up next, the New Orleans Saints are drafting a wide receiver in round two, and I encourage you to stick around to see who that pass catcher is. But before we get into that, the New Orleans Saints draft hats have been dropped, and I personally really like it. I like the flat bill. I think that the gray is pretty dope, but the black and gold just looks so fresh. I also like how on the side they got the boot with the Saints in there. Wish it would have said who that. I will say that. I wish it said who that. But I do like that they had the state. And they have Saints right there on the side. So you can go and get a draft hat. These are the official hats that the Saints draft picks will be wearing all throughout the 2024 NFL draft. Go to chatsports.com slash Saints draft and you can get yourself geared up. And if you forgot that link, I just said it. I understand. It's okay. I put it in the comment section and description of this video. Go get geared up and swagged out right now. So here is how... The second round, you know, the picks right before the New Orleans Saints shook out for the ESPN mock draft between Field Yates and Mel Kuyper. TJ Tampa going to the charges. Land, or excuse me, Lad McConkey, not Landon McConkey. Lad McConkey going to the Panthers at 39. And then you have a handful of good offensive linemen taken at 40 and 41. Mason Smith, a really talented defensive tackle. I hate that the Falcons landed Malachi Corley in this one because I would have loved the New Orleans Saints to land him. And I think that he should be a Saints pick because I think he could be extremely effective. Jackson Powers Johnson heads to Las Vegas. So that leaves the New Orleans Saints with Ricky Pearsall, the wide receiver out of Florida. Now at six foot one, 189 pounds, the slot receiver does lack a little bit of size and he's pretty slender, but he has really, really good hands and he has nice yak ability. And that's something that I truly do value. I like Malachi Corley having such good yak ability. And I think that Ricky Purcell could do that or Parasol could do that as well. Now he does turn 24 years old as a rookie. To some people, that's a con to me. I kind of look at it as we have a lot of people hitting the transfer portal. You have the COVID year, whatever. I don't really care about the age. I honestly think that it's a little bit of an overblown metric. But the size could cause him problems at the next level. However, this dude is an athletic freak. Look at his relative athletic score based on the numbers that he put up when he tested. The 40-yard dash is amazing. The 20-yard split, the 10-yard split are stellar. The shuttle and the three-cone drill were amazing. And the vertical and broad jump shows how explosive he is. Now, the one knock that the relative athletic score had and Math Bomb had on the prospect is his size. But the overall score at 9.91 fits the bill for what the New Orleans Saints are looking for in a draft prospect. Now, I do think that the New Orleans Saints could use a slot wide receiver because I want the Saints to get creative in their usage with Rashid Shahid. Not to mention, Ricky Parasol also had the catch of the year against uh, Charlotte, I believe. Yeah, it was against Charlotte. I mean, literally, full extension, few feet off the ground, one-handed catch, unbelievable. I think that this could be effective with Derek Carr, too, because of the relationship he had with Hunter Renfro. I think you can just recreate it 
with this player and you get him at a much cheaper, much younger, much more athletic and productive type. So in terms of the production for the wide receiver, pretty solid. I would have loved to see him get to that 1,000-yard mark, but hey, who did he have throwing him the football? Couldn't tell you because the Florida offense was a little bit lackluster. However, the Ricky Parasol was very talented. Averaging just under 15 yards per catch, four touchdowns, only two drops last year. Here's what Mel Kuyper said about the prospect. Parasol, who played with Jaden Daniels at Arizona State before transferring to Florida in 2022, really impressed me at the Combine. New Orleans parted way with Michael Thomas, and it needs competition in the wideout room. Now, I do trust A.T. Perry to become the X receiver. I like his size. I like his athleticism. I like how talented he is at the point of catch. But I do think that the Saints need a slot guy. Rashid Shahid is so damn fast that I think that you shouldn't limit him to a slot receiver role. You should be very creative in his usage. And if you have a true slot specialist, you can allow that position to be a safety blanket for Derek Carr but also, when you're having other players in the mix, it can open up different play styles and different play looks for Derek Carr as well. And I do think that the offensive tackle, wide receiver, you know, one-two punch at the first and second rounds are a very popular pick amongst a lot of mock drafts from a lot of experts, including myself. I'm not calling myself an expert. I'm just saying I also have been doing a lot of offensive tackle and then wide receiver or pass catcher in round two. I'm all for that strategy. I am all for giving Derek Carr another offensive weapon, bringing in another young tool that could be effective in a wide receiver group that is talented, that is explosive, but is also young and cheap. Now, here were the players available at like wide receiver slash pass catcher position that the Saints could have drafted. Um, at 45, a quarter, like in terms of the Mel Kuyper mock draft and the Field Yates mock draft, Jalen Polk, Troy Franklin, Roman Wilson, Tez Walker, and Jatavion Sanders, the tight end out of Texas, they were all also available. But the uh, experts at ESPN, they went with Ricky Parasol out of Florida. So ESPN's mock draft, here's how it went down. Grade it for me by giving it a letter grade. A, B, C, D, or F in the comment section of course you can rip them and say hey i like jalen polker i really like troy franklin why not jatavion sanders let me know what you guys think in the comment section and if you haven't already i encourage you to subscribe to the channel we're going to be going live for round one of the nfl draft and if we have enough fun and if we can have good viewership and really good participation i bet i could convince the bosses to let us do the other rounds so help a brother out subscribe today and y'all stay golden. We'll see you next time.